And then you sort of went video game mode with, I think, 19 points the rest of the quarter, a zillion blocks, assists. Just talk about that that run that you spearheaded. Um, just continuing to kind of be aggressive. I felt like um, like we were letting them off the hook a little bit and wanting to make sure that I demanded the ball, um, especially in the post. Um, threes were falling. And just the way that we continued to move the ball, my teammates found me and uh, got us kind of into the – the zone and the run that we wanted to to be at. Hi everybody, I'm Fakela. You had a career high in three pointers with six, and a lot of them you really sort of cashed in on those catch and shoot opportunities. How do you think your sort of game on offense really helps make the group even more special? Um, just spacing, being um in the right place at the right time, and just shooting with confidence. <laughs> Hello, all. congrats on the win. Um, Coach, my question is for you. It's regarding KT's offensive performance tonight. Uh, when KT hits at least two three-pointers, including her career high five tonight, uh, this team – Six, uh, five, six, six seven, six, seven. Her name is Kathrila. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can I steal that? <laughs> but um, anyway. Anyway, okay. The team is five and one, and the average margin of victory is – um, just over 13 points. So what does KT's newfound offensive abilities bring to this lineup from a coach's perspective? And to, and Brianna, what does it bring from a player's perspective too? Yeah. Look, I mean, firstly, I, I think she practices this every single day. And, and tonight I complimented her because she starred in her role. You know, we all have different roles that we have to fulfill on this team. And, um, you know, she plays her role perfectly. And, and some nights she's going to get a lot more threes and other nights. And this is one of the nights. Every time it goes up, I know it's going in because I see it every single day in practice. And um, she's always going to give us great effort. So um, well done, KT. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that, um, like like Sandy said, you know, she's continuing to um, be in the gym working on her shot. But the fact that when she shoots it, she's staying in it. Like she's not over overcutting and things like that and understanding like, yeah, she's a shooter and I'm going to space to my range. And then the rest of the team just continues to find her and she knows um, when to knock it down and when to, to continue to move it. Stewie, so far, obviously six blocks tonight and, mm. you know, the zillion blocks so far this year, you've averaged uh, the most stocks, blocks and stocks combined in your career. What has been the difference this year that you've seen? Oh. Blocks plus stock steals my, okay. my phone. I didn't know either. What, what have you been seeing uh, just on the defensive end, especially this year? Has it been more of an emphasis to you on the defensive end? Yeah, I mean, I think I just want to continue to grow um, as a player and defensively. And um, because we have this lineup where, you know, we're switching a lot. Sometimes I'm starting on guards and it's constant, like, you're, we're constantly in the scramble, making sure that my hands are active and um, continuing to just make it tough on the other team. You know, we know that L.A. Um, turns the ball over a lot and just making sure that hands are in passing lanes. Uh, hi, Coach. Just to circle back on the KT point, before the game, I asked KT if she sees a little bit of herself in Coach Renika Hodges, someone who you've had the ability to coach. You know, when you're able to see KT prepare and have a game like this, do you see that parallel? To, yeah, uh, no, hundred percent. I mean, that's her coach too. But um, Coach Ron would actually say that she had to learn to play defense when she came in because she was an offensive player, um, in college. And when she was in Houston, she said she had to be committed to that to get some court time. Katie's always been a great defensive player, and I think she's developed that three point shot. Um, but yeah, she uh, you know, Coach Ron works with her a lot daily, and you know, put pulls a lot of her, you know, her information and and skill set into to her game as well. And it's um, you know, they work really hard when they get out in the court. It's fun to see the work you put in, you get the results. Bree, can you talk about the chase down block that you had on mm -hmm. Stephanie Talbot and the fans' reaction mm -hmm. towards it? And Coach, talk about how you contain Ari McDonald and Kia Nurse in this game. Um, I mean, just not giving up on the play. Um, whatever happened on the offensive end, knowing that we want to make every basket difficult for them. And um, also just the timing. You know, I could see Hamby was about to pass it back to Steph and – um, the way that the fans reacted, I mean, it's it's amazing to have those type of blocks at, at home. And um, then directly following that, I think we got like a five-second violation. So it just kind of continued to build. Yep. Talk about Kia Nurse. Was that the question? How we stopped them. Yeah, look, um, you know, I, I thought defensively we were okay. I didn't think we were great. <laughs> you know, we had a lot of breakdowns. So, um, you know, a little fatigue sets in and – um, lack of communication, but there are areas that we know we can fix up and just get a little bit more, um, you know, 
intentional that we're, we're how we want to play. But um, for the most part, I thought, um, you know, we made it hard, but she did get some wide open ones I wasn't really happy with. S Sandy, you know, to start the game, so early first quarter, it looked like you called Spain League, Stack League, whatever you want to call it, a couple of times early on, you know, with the pick and roll screen and screener, having Sab pop out for the three. Uh, especially after Snap. Good to know. Especially after running that, you know, a uh, few times in the prior game as well, is that something you're really trying to hammer into the playbook as like a, something you got? Yeah, we have a few different options out of it. And we just think it's a really hard um, scheme to, to defend, especially when you've got a great shooter. Um, you think Diana Trussi does it a lot in Phoenix as well. And it's something that we've, you know, had, you just want to, it's been in our playbook. We want to utilize against certain opponents. Um, and, you know, it's it's better when Ivana's in because we need a handler to handle that and um, a post player because, uh, you know, that's gravitational pull, her favorite word, um, you know, and get open. And Sabrina's one of the best shooters, doesn't need much space. Uh, KT, so, um, Ellie, the elephant joined you during that post game interview with Holly Rowe. I saw she was trying to like peek her, you know, head into the shot. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, <laughs> Stewie has called her this team's 12th player. I'm just curious, what are the ways that, you know, you see and observe her as this team's 12th player? Yeah, I think she brings this energy, um, to our team. Um, Ellie is amazing. And uh, just the energy she brings kind of helps us, helps the fans, and the fans give us energy. So I think it's a great combination. Um, Kayla, you're incredibly efficient with your scoring today. So I just wanted to know, was today, what were you feeling going into today's game? Did it feel organic, or are you just kind of implementing that next player up mentality? And how do you always kind of stay ready? Um, I think just staying ready. Um, you know, we played them not too long ago. So just bringing the energy and the confidence, that's just kind of my two main things, confidence and energy. My question is just for Sandy on that Stewie chase down block. When did you, did you kind of realize that she was going to be able to get to it and how special did that moment feel just kind of with the organic um, crowd reaction from the sideline? I mean, I can't believe she actually got back to do that. Um, I was impressed and then it was coming and then it was like, and then, you know, obviously she hit the backboard and I was like, oh gosh, here we go. What are you doing that for? But I mean, that's inspiring. That gets the crowd going, that gets her teammates going and, and that's what Stewie bring to us. I mean, she's a great two way player and, um, I mean, just not just the blocks, her activity. If you watch, if you track her running around, I mean, her movement and how she affects our overall game, um, yeah, we're at the best when she's doing that. And that was pretty impressive, even if, even if it was on the Aussie. So she won't live that one down, a reminder. Hey, KT. Hey. Uh, you hit five of your six threes in the second half, and I believe your last one came on that behind-the-back pass from JJ. Mm -hmm. What uh, have you seen from her in recent games as a passer and in that development? You talking about JJ? Yeah. I'm um, just expecting the passes, being ready. Um, you don't know where that pass going to come from. So just being, you know, looking at her at all times and just being ready. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> hey, guys. Huh? Um, Hello. Quick one for all of you guys. <laughs> I can wait for Mike. There we go. Hey, voice of God is back. Um, so for all you guys, obviously the pride game today, coach, you spoke very beautifully on just what it kind of means to the community to, to have this game. But now that you've been out, the, you've seen these people come and support. What, what, what does a game like this mean, especially, you know, for a team that wears equality on the front of their jerseys? Is that to me? Uh, to, to all of you, actually. Um, anyone can answer and then a quick follow-up. to. Stu. I did already speak beautifully. I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I can go. Um, I mean, I think it's it's amazing to have um, Pride Night. Um, obviously, Pride is is something that continues to go more than one day and month or game or things like that. But um, what I think is is really cool about it is we continue to give people a platform to be their self and be genuine and be comfortable in their own skin. And um, if that happens most or best at a Liberty, Liberty game, we love and we embrace that. And we continue to, like you said, um, fight for equality and just – um, live our lives unapologetically so then others can too. Yeah. Brilliantly said. Uh, Sam, Sandy, back here. Um, uh, LA's obviously struggling a little bit, but what, what do you, what does it say about the team and your main players that you're shorthanded <laughs> with a couple of starters and a reserve down, but you've been able to overcome that the, the last couple of yeah. games? It, it, it shows a lot about our commitment. Um, to being the best team we can be and, and making no excuses with the ones that aren't here. Everyone will go through adversity with players out. Um, it's our role players stepping up when they're called on um, and believing it. But in the end, it's our, 
it's our big three taking ownership of making sure they're bringing their best game every single day. Uh, ladies, congratulations. Uh, Kayla, uh, you've been a scorer at UTEP. You've been a you know regular starter in the NBA, WNBA for years. You've been a rotation player. Um, you had a moment where you like bent down at the end of the game. Was this maybe the most gratifying or most satisfied uh, you've ever been after a WNBA game? And if not, can you recall a game where you felt the most satisfied after a WNBA game? Um, to that, to that comment, I always been down after every game and before I start, um, I always pray. So that's, uh, that's a routine for me, but, um, no, 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 just embracing it and just, you know, it goes to my teammates, just working hard. My coach is believing in me. So yeah, but I always pray after and before the game. Uh, it's always tough to, you know, beat any team twice in any league. However, tonight you guys continue to stay aggressive without two starters and, you know, with a game on a back-to-back. -back. You know, what does it say about this team's identity and just overall mindset? What does it go? Okay. I think we're building, you know, we, every game's important for us and that's what we, we don't want to miss opportunities to, to be, to bring our best every single night because especially on our home court, this is about our fans. This is about, um, us tr wanting to finish in that top two. So every game matters. And like I said, when you've got a great players around it and they're committed to that, like I said, we're not making any excuses. We wish our, we look forward to when we get some more people coming back. We're in the middle of a really tough schedule. Now we have to go and do a back to back against Atlanta. And then we've got the commissioner's cup. So in Barclays, cool. No, in Barclays. Um, but it, like, I think it's just, it's their commitment to the program. It's their commitment to each other to be the best team that we can be. And and that's what we're always going to focus on. We want to always come out and give us our best, best effort, even though there is some fatigue and I wish I could give them a little few more minutes um, of not playing, but um, they always bring it and they always want to be on the court and win. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all. You're funny.